Environment Canada is warning BC will be hit by another major storm. 30 to 60 millimeters of rain could fall in Haida Gwaii. Prince Rupert could see 100 to 150 millimeters by tonight. The storm is then expected to head south to areas already hit hard by floods and mudslides. Coming up in just a few moments, we'll hear from a warning preparedness meteorologist. But first, for more on what's happening on the ground, let's bring in CTV's David Mulko on the Abbotsford side of Sumas Prairie. Thanks so much for making time, David. I want to start with asking you what's going on, where you are tonight. Uh, what are residents there going through? Yeah, Rushman and Chanel, we've been reporting here all week since last Monday that today's day eight, if you count those mudslides, is day zero a week ago Sunday. Remarkable, isn't it? Uh, the dike breaches have been plugged, both of them. The flood waters in spots starting to recede. So we went in today with a pastor. His name is Cam Stewart. He's the pastor of Arnold Community Church, which is kind of a hamlet on the Abbotsford side of the prairie. And what we saw was simply remarkable. He took us into the home of Mike and Teresa Flores. They've been there 12 years. They have a farmhouse. They have a couple goats out front, including, mm -hmm. including a baby named Yoshi. All the animals are fine. They are fine. What's not fine is their property because their entire ground floor, it's now been pumped out, but essentially gutted. So Mike talked about how anything really above waist level, there were papers sitting on a desk, for example, that were untouched. Anything below that, gutted, ripped out. So they were ripping out their appliances, their kitchen, all the furniture was gone, mattresses, you name it. And believe it or not, in all of this, Teresa Flores said to me, you know, we're taking it one step at a time, but but I just feel blessed. She used the word blessed because of the number of people from the community, volunteers, business owners with trucks, guys with generators, you name it, that are coming out saying, what do you need help with? I'm here. And she said the community outpouring here, and the pastor echoed this, is simply phenomenal. David, you must be hearing so many stories from people who have lived there their whole lives. I mean, have they seen anything like this before? It's hard to swallow. It's I mean, we were out on a jet boat last week in the middle of what was essentially a lake with people's homes, with their livelihoods, with their livestock. I mean, I watched as we were tagging along with a couple locals. They rescued two dogs and a cat. There were other people in other boats doing the same thing. Uh, what is incredible, again, is that resilience is stronger than anything Mother Nature can throw, than any rainfall can, that, that can come, right, with two more atmospheric rivers, which I'm sure you'll talk about, coming later Thursday and Saturday, and all that unexpectedness around this. I mean, at the church, for example, in the back, they set up essentially a place for people to dump everything they had to get rid of. G guitars, bikes, furniture, washers and dryers, refrigerators. I, I call it I called it the Lord's Landfill and you had a couple guys with local businesses who were loading it up with big diggers into trucks by the truckload. They'd done eight. They expected to do 20 just to get it out of there and around front. Uh, volunteers with coffee, baked goods, you name it. It was a church command post of sorts. And guys, you, you're going to love this. On the white board out front, they had a list of what they needed, and it said heaters, rubber bins, storage bins, and at the bottom of that list, hugs. Oh, love to see the community come together, even though it is such a difficult time. Um, David, also want to ask you about how people there are preparing now for this second round of severe weather. Yeah, second, third, fourth, whatever it is. Uh, and it's so tricky because even with those dike breaches fixed temporarily, you have to remember that this entire prairie behind me essentially was a lake. It was drained in the 1920s to create this farmland. So it's sort of a bowl is how the mayor here describes it. Once it fills, it's hard to unfill to pump it out because they got to pump the water up and back up to level. Uh, in, this, in this community in Arnold, the water level still pooling like lakes in front yards, even if the houses are clear. So what you're seeing a it's people like trying to chuck everything out, clean things up, get the mold before mold sets in, right? Make sure the animals are safe as you're seeing sandbagging. So rings around houses starting to pop up one layer, two layers, three layers. Uh, around the clock. They've got them stored in different places. So if people aren't cleaning up, they're sandbagging, they're baking. They're just trying to get ready because you have to remember, right? It's the end of November. The rains are just getting started. And, and, and I think if there is one word to describe what could be coming in the days and weeks ahead, despite all this resilience, it's just that uncertainty. Mm. Rashmi mm. Chanel. Thank you. CTV's David Malka reporting live from Abbotsford, BC. We appreciate your work, David. Thank you.
With more on the forecast in that area, let's go live to Warning Preparedness Meteorologist Armel Castellan from Environment and Climate Change Canada. Armel, what is in store for that region? Well, yes, we are definitely dealing with a lot of active storms. Uh, it's been extraordinary this fall, and obviously a couple weekends ago was the worst, but we are not out of the woods. We have an atmospheric river coming. Well, we have the remnants of the atmospheric river that hit the north coast, first of all, today and tonight, so another 15, 20 millimetres potential for the south coast. We follow that with a relatively speaking, weaker atmospheric river, but still relatively potent considering the vulnerabilities on the ground. 40 to 70 millimetres on Thursday into Friday, 50 to 80 uh, for the North Shore, and potentially 100 to 200 on the outside coast of Vancouver Island, uh, and again, all the way up the coast to the North Coast. So uh, that's just in the short term. We have a little bit of a break, so short, in fact, that by Saturday afternoon, we start again in earnest, uh, the Pacific is just unrelenting right now. It's a, certainly a parade of storms. And even beyond that, uh, we have relatively high certainty that we start again uh, next week with a very strong uh, pattern for more wetness still. So it's, uh, it's certainly not over at this point. Armel, I wonder if you can explain exactly what an atmospheric river is and, and why we're seeing two of them in such a short time span. Actually, we see uh, 20 to 30 atmospheric rivers uh, per given active pattern, active season, so kind of mid-October through to March. Uh, it just that happens that uh, the term is popularized when we get a really big and strong one, and for good reason. Uh, an atmospheric river is essentially uh, a ribbon of uh, supercharged moisture and heat that comes from the subtropics. So here on the West Coast, they come from, this, from the Hawaiian direction. We sometimes call them pineapple uh, expresses or tropical punch um, because they come from there and they can hold so much more moisture and they're relatively thin but they hit one part of the coast and they're unrelenting for sometimes upwards of 48 hours uh, and we can actually expect that to increase over the next few decades uh, with climate change and that will be uh, an enormous part of uh, the west coast winters as we go forward. So Armel this parade uh, of storms as you describe it. Is that an example of climate change? Well, we always have an active pattern, you know, at one point in the fall and winter. Uh, usually, you know, it can last a couple of weeks. Sometimes it lasts six or eight weeks. This time it's been particularly long, really since mid-September. We've seen, you know, close to 400% of normal precipitation for September, close to 150% in October. So far in November, we're, we're up there at least at 150%, if not some places already at 200% of normal. So it's been a long stretch. We've had, this will be our sixth atmospheric river and probably seventh and eighth in, in short order. Uh, and then followed by, we've also had three weather bombs, so extraordinarily deep, low pressure systems that are not atmospheric rivers themselves. So very active. Um, yes, the, and, and, in short, climate change is going to bring us more extremes. It's going to up the frequency of big events, big extreme events, their amplitude and the, how long they last on any particular uh, place in time. So this is consistent with that message that we have been, we've known for a while. It's just really arriving in earnest at this point. A very serious situation. Armel, thanks so much for your time and your insight. We appreciate that. Yeah, my pleasure. Have a good evening. You as well. We're now joined live by Melissa Dahl and her father, Les Johnson, who live in the hard-hit Sumas Prairie area of Abbotsford, B.C. Much of this area is underwater, and yesterday, Melissa and Les rescued a neighbor who was stranded on a floating staircase. Uh, thanks so much for being with us, both of you. Just want to start by asking if you're in a safe place and, and really how you're doing today. No, we're fine. We're very, very safe. We're, we're good and dry. So tell us a bit about the rescue. What happened yesterday? Well, just because you have to do what you do at a once in a lifetime experience, we thought we would go boating on Sumas Lake. So that's what we were doing and just, just looking and taking photos. And I don't, uh, I'm going to say my hearing's not great, but Melissa heard somebody uh, yell right. for help. Yeah. And she can take over from here. They said, Dad, he's over there. He says, Where? 
well, on the stairs. And he's, of course, looking at the house that happens to be on the corner because you don't expect to see stairs floating, you know, right next to the road. Mm -hmm. And so what did you do, Melissa? Well, we, uh, Dad uh, guided the boat up to the stairs and we threw the rope. The gentleman um, pulled us in close to him and then he climbed into the boat and we got him as close to the uh, cops as we could. So that's, that's him walking up the road now, yeah. the road that he had just driven down. Yeah, these images are really, really compelling. What was it like in that moment? Did it feel like this was really happening? Uh, no, you, no. You, you don't expect that to uh, be happening, you know, three or four days in, into, the, uh, into the, uh, the problem. Like this was uh, somebody that had uh, gone through a roadblock for whatever reason or decided he was going to go and he just kept driving. And that was a picture of his truck there. Mm -hmm. So who, who knows? And we don't know why he did what he did. Like, uh, I'm just glad he's safe. He was mm -hmm. probably mildly hypothermic, but, um, you know, we gave him a jacket and boated him as close as we could, and that was it. Yeah. And what do you make of everything you see around you there, Les, of, of this weather system and what's to come? Uh, well, number one, I'm glad they've got the, the dike repaired. I'm going to say repaired. I don't know to what degree. Hopefully it holds back the water. Um, I think there's going to have to be a lot of, a lot of questions answered by the, the municipality as far as, um, you know, maintenance and, you know, why things happen. And I really believe that Washington State's going to have to do something with the Nooksack River because we can't keep on doing this. What does this extreme weather mean for you both, mean for your families and for industry there? Uh, if we didn't have the Nooksack River come through, I do believe that we would be fine. Like we've had, uh, you know, major, major rainstorms before and, uh, and our, our diking and uh, uh, Sumas River system can, can and have in the past. Accommodated it. Yeah, and from there, it's the uh, the onset of a, another uh, body of water flowing into the prairie that uh, we have just not, not been able to handle. Mm -hmm. Now, if the dike hadn't have broke, it might be a totally different story, but we just mm -hmm. don't know that. Yeah, and what you're referring to, Les, for all of our viewers to understand, is that in Abbotsford and in the Sumas Prairie, it's, it's a flat land. It's, it's where water would collect during a flood, and now your mayor is looking at possibly demolishing some homes to just accept that this is going to be where the water flows. Melissa, are you reconsidering relocating? No, I actually live on the hill above the flat, so I have a great aerial view of our farm and neighboring farms. So for me to personally relocate, no. And I don't think we're actually quite fortunate. Our farm is located on the old, uh, on the edge of the old lake. So um, as far as flooding goes, we get a little bit of water, but not near to the extent or devastation as, you know, a couple farm blocks away from us. Mm -hmm. Melissa and Les, thank you so much for your time. We hope you both are safe. Well, thank you for thank having you. us. Thank you.